Hello and thank you for viewing our video. This video was created to present our junior senior clinical design project at Rowan University. My name is Robert Mullane. I am a senior mechanical engineer. And I am Kristen Greninich, also a senior mechanical engineer at Rowan University. And we are the mechanical design team for the functional near infrared brain imaging project. Our project was a joint effort with an electrical design team that included Ryan Elwell, junior ECE, and senior electrical and computer engineers Jeffrey Mercante, John Paul Player, and Matthew Sargent. This project was also run in conjunction with a design team from Juxtral University. Our faculty project manager is Dr. Linda Head, with co-manager Dr. Ravi Ramachandran. The device uses near-infrared light LEDs to shine light through the skull and into the brain while the test subject is actively involved in cognitive activity. The light is absorbed by any hemoglobin present in the brain and the light that is not absorbed is reflected back to the receiver diodes. This signal can be translated by software into an image that shows the amount of hemoglobin in the brain. Currently, this technology is used by the government to help determine how soldiers handle different stressful situations. The presently available device requires that the test subject be seated in front of a computer while testing takes place. This is because the headgear has to be directly connected to the computer as represented by the number one in the setup shown. The headgear apparatus is hardwired as one unit as seen here after removing the protective foam layer. The main objective of this project is to make an improved device that is mobile to allow a test subject to complete physical as well as cognitive activities while wearing the unit. The second major goal was to make the unit modular to allow for different size subjects as well as different LED and diode configurations. Our first design was to be made using a mold that would create slots in a rubber housing. The slots would then have metal evaporated in them and small grooves would be cut into the metal using a .008 inch jeweler saw. The diodes and LEDs would then be put in small rubber boots to block ambient light and then could be placed anywhere on the slotted housing. The aspect ratio proved to be too small to allow for metal to be evaporated into the grooves so we needed to evaluate different alternatives. One idea was to use wire embedded into the rubber during the molding process, but this configuration proved to have excess electrical noise during the testing stage and was also scrapped. After some team brainstorming, it was decided that we would create a mold shown here from SolidWorks that would house one LED and one diode and would be wired to four connectors, two male and two female. This would allow for multiple configurations, quick setup, low or no electrical noise, and less costly repair. You can see here how each connector is inserted and then the top is put in place to hold everything still while the rubber that will be injected into the mold has time to set. Once the rubber is set completely, the unit can be removed from the mold. It can be seen here, using two prototype parts, how they could be connected to form different configurations. From these artistic renderings, you can see how, theoretically, any size device can be made, even one that would cover the entire head. At this point in the project, we were contacted by Drexel and told they were designing a single unit consisting of one LED and four diodes positioned with the LED in the center and each diode three centimeters from the LED in a square configuration. A hardwired version is seen here. After putting the single prototype on hold, we changed gears and created a design in SolidWorks along the same lines, only fitting the new requirements. This is a rendering of the design we created.
After the mold was created using an ABS modeler, four diodes and one centrally located LED were wired on a 20-pin female connector and fitted into the mold. With the help of Tyler, a junior mechanical engineering student working on the Magno Rheological Elastomer Clinic project, we mixed up a batch of rubber compound to exact specifications and filled our new mold. It can be seen here how the rubber is mixed with a catalyst to promote hardening. The rubber and catalyst are mixed thoroughly and then by using a syringe, the compound is injected into the mold. The use of the syringe allows for a uniform flow through the nest of wires and into the small corners of the mold. The mold was then placed in an oven at 121 degrees Celsius for at least 24 hours to be able to harden to a solid rubber consistency. After curing, the solid unit is removed from the oven and extracted from the casing. The completed unit is now ready to be handed over to the electrical team. The parts seen here should be fully functioning and after being electrically tested can be attached to a bench setup as seen earlier to verify its functionality. After it has been certified, the next step in the process can occur. The future of this project, with graduate students in the summer and a new group of undergrads next fall, we hope to have this unit tested and certified and take the next step toward making the device mobile. We would also like to continue with the electrical design team to have a modular unit that can be connected with as many or as little parts as is necessary. We hope you have found our video entertaining as well as informative. If you are interested in more of the clinical research being done at Rowan University, please do a search of Rowan Research on YouTube.com or visit Rowan University's website at www.rowan.edu. We would like to thank these people for their help and input.